They say in life there's only two certainties, death and taxes. This statement rings very true for a solo DMZ player. When you come across another team, you're gunned down, and if they do pick you up when you plea, they tax all of your good gear. This is why it is essential for solos to have effective regain strategies. So in today's one, I'm going to show you how to successfully navigate the Vondel map to get to good loot spots, avoid players and bots, and have the best chance at exfilling, fully kitted, ready for your next infill into the DMZ. It's said that knowledge is power, and in terms of DMZ, understanding the spawn locations is essential for a solo. If you head over to Warzone Hub and find the interactive map for Vondal, adjust the filters to show the spawn locations. There's only 8 on Vondal which make them easy to learn. Having an idea of where you want to go off each spawn point will allow you to move quickly away from your spawn and reduce the chances of being caught by a team that may want to spawn rush. From this spawn point here in the west, I know there will be one team to the north at Castle and one to the south near the zoo. Now I want to make my way to the fire station as there are some lockers there that have good chances of two plates and medium backpacks. I also want to stop by the ammo cache to give myself one more stun and one more throwing knife. From here I'm going to work my way to the petrol station to acquire one of the most valuable things for a solo player, the scuba gas mask. This will allow us to use the water to our advantage to navigate around the map and not attract attention from the bots and other players. Now that we've got everyone's best friend Scuba Steve, utilise the water to get around to the southern side of the zoo. Now here's a walkway, now we can use this for two reasons. We can just scope out who's in the area if that enemy team that spawned over here are. Let's get a bit of map awareness and we can save our mask a little bit. We're just going to make our way across the land here, get back in the water and we're going to work around to where we do want to loot and that is the cruise terminal. So the cruise terminal itself is a denied area, but you can get access without a key by activating one of the two bomb sites on the southern side. Now I prefer the one in the west, there's some cover with the railway containers, and then I also prefer this entrance on the west. Straight inside there's a couple of crates, so if you haven't got any armour at this point you may find some. Any eagle-eyed viewers will see that I have a three-plate comms vest on. Now just full disclaimer, I just came in and sped run this. But I assure you that the same principle applies when you have a one or a two-plate vest. Just use the angles, use the stairwell, move from cover to cover. And just make it so that you're taking on one or two bots at a time so you don't get overwhelmed. Now, one thing I do like about this cruise terminal over, say, something like the aquarium, for example, is that um, since you unlock all the doors with the bomb sites, those bots will keep on spawning in, and they do kind of act as a bit of a backstop if other players turn up. They can be a little bit annoying, but if another player or another squad turns up, they'll make some noise and it'll tip you off to give you a bit of an awareness. Um, the other thing you can do is that with the water close by, it gives you an exit strategy. Times you've cleared out the upper floor and you've looked down stairs, you should have cleared out most of the bots if you make your way down this little staircase. Um, you can get all of the orange crates on the northern side and you can work through, there's a little hallway there, you can come through just adjacent of the bathrooms. There's a couple more crates in there. You want to try and just loot as quickly as possible and then you want to move on before you attract any attention. Okay, with a bit of luck you should have got everything you need after you've looted the cruise terminal. Now it's time to make you start making your way to Xville. When I leave the cruise terminal I'd like to just go to the east a little bit to this adjacent building. There's an ammo cache here. You can get stock backups with your lethals, your tacticals and your ammo just to get you through the rest of the round. Um, if you come inside and you make your way to the elevator shaft there's a zip line that will take you up to the roof. Now this is quite a good rotation strategy, also it's another way you can get away from the cruise terminal in a hurry if other players turn up, and as you can see by parachuting off the roof you can rotate fairly quickly, um, just keep them to the outside of the map. Another benefit to traversing the outside of the map will be passed by enemy spawn points. Here I come across an enemy spawn point where the enemies died early, whether being to bots or other players. But this is spawned in the scavenger, and I'm going to use this opportunity to take out the scavenger and get myself an easy advanced UAV and gold skull. After dealing with the scavenger, I make my way around the back side of the exhibition building. Now there's a zipline that takes you up the roof, and this is another way you can traverse quickly. 
Now I'll show you this little spot behind the central station. There's another ammo cache and quite often there'll be a lot of cash on the benches that spawn in here. Another tip is you can actually shoot or knife the vending machines and this gives you more cash. Now be warned I have been caught out a few times where getting so much cash from this area has put me on the wrong end of a hunt squad. But there is a spawn point in front of this central station so if you spawn here you can get some quick cash, get to a buy station and get yourself kitted. Beyond gear, some people want to get their x full streak going as part of their regain. So contracts, there are plenty of options, but I'm going to recommend HVTs just due to the keys they drop, which can also be used for further regains. So let's talk about some of the notable key spots in Vondel. First is the bike park. Now the bike park is just north of the zoo and it consists of two buildings. Each building is going to have two orange crates, um, gold bars, other valuable loot like origami horses and you'll also commonly see three and five attachment guns. Next up is the Mayor's Briefcase. Now this is on the west side of City Hall. Now it's not 100% guaranteed but there is a good chance that you can get a tempered plate carrier. If not you can get a stage bag key which is a guaranteed GPU which is another $6,000 towards your regain. Next up is the Smuggler's Trap. The Smuggler's Drop is part of a 7 key loop that you can find on the bundle. To start with the Smuggler's Drop, it is located in the L-shaped building to the northwest of Castle. Now sometimes this is a stronghold, and in my experience when this has been a stronghold, the Smuggler's Drop will contain a 3 plate comms vest. And I've generally found when it's not a stronghold that there will be an encrypted hard drive. So you could go on to barter for a comms vest if that's what you wanted to do. Other than that you will find the Bridge Stash key. The bridge stash key is found to the southeast of the cemetery, underwater. Now the crate contains a gold skull and it will give you the next key which is the diver's crate key. The diver crate is just north of museum, next to a spawn point. In the diver crate it will give you an electric drill and it's also going to give you the equipment crate which is close by. The equipment crate is located under the museum. Now the equipment crate is going to give you a second electric drill. Now that you've been to the bridge stash, the diver and now the equipment crates, you just need to make your way to a petrol station to get two gas cans and you can craft a secure bag. The equipment crate will lead you to the next key in the loop which is the sewers maintenance key. The sewers maintenance key is just to the southwest of the market, close to the bridge stash key. It is in the underground sewers and the next key that you'll get in the loop is the town apartment key. The town apartment is just west of the fire station, inside the town apartment you'll find an orange crate, some weapons and the next key in the loop which is the restaurant briefcase key. Lastly in the eastern part of the map the restaurant briefcase key is found in the upstairs restaurant part of the exhibition building. You will find next to the piano there's a table with a briefcase, inside the briefcase you will find the key that completes the loop which is back to the smuggler's drop. Right, after all that hopefully you guys have regained and you're ready for your next info into the DMZ. If you found this helpful and or entertaining, let me know by hitting the like and subscribe. If there's anything else you'd like to see me cover in future videos, drop in the comment section below. As always guys, I will catch you out there in the DMZ.